Well, Centre Stage takes place very appropriately in the ladies' stand at the SCG today because it is all about the ladies, mostly about the ladies on oh, semi-final day in the uh, in the World Cup, but it's, it's actually more about the rain and whether or not it will play a big part, isn't it, Lisa? Yeah, there's been a lot of rain over the probably the last two days and with rain forecasted for the semi-finals as well. Everyone is on Weather Watch. Uh, their apps are downloaded and everyone's having a look at it. Um, as I look out at the ground, the square is covered. A few messages on WhatsApp. Why haven't they covered the whole ground like they do in certain parts of Sri Lanka and India as well? This ground does drain really well and uh, we've seen uh, in the past the ground staff be able to to get a game on as long as it stops yeah i've been talking to them today and they say between half an hour and an hour just depending on how heavy the rain has been well we did see in that sixes final in the, the mm -hmm. big bash they were able to get it in big difference here though you've got to get two games in and the minimum number of overs for this tournament will be the same for the men's is 10 per side so they need to get in 40 overs that's a lot more than the sixes would have been able to get in when they hosted that game yeah it is a lot more overs and and i can understand the reasons why the icc changed that because semi-finals 10 over a side you at least should get the best team to qualify five overs sometimes it's a bit of a hit and miss someone can just come out and play an inning so so 10 overs gives a, a, a greater advantage for the best team to to qualify but when there's rain around that means more time on the field which may be hard to to come by and that risk of, of getting no game is also compounded when you have no reserve day which has been a big topic of discussion around here today what's what are your thoughts yeah, it's interesting because obviously it's the same for the men's and the women's tournament. The men's tournament has obviously more teams. So if you start to have res reserve days and then travel days, it extends the competition, extends the expense, uh, extends the window of the tournament. So you can understand those reasonings. But maybe sometimes you need to be flexible uh, between the men's and women's tournament. It doesn't always have to be the same fit. Uh, I am sure after this uh, tournament, if we don't get on, there will be a big discussion at an ICC level about reserve days. And maybe, similar to what we saw with the World Cup final and Super Over, things can change. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? We never think about these situations and the, the worst possible outcome. Same with that Super Over mm. until it actually becomes an issue. But I guess it, you just have to look down. Let's, let's assume that we are going to have games played. Mm. Obviously, who adapts best in these conditions is going to play a key part. Your thoughts on, on India, England? That's a really huge matchup, isn't it? Yeah, it's a massive uh, matchup. And this will be the sixth occasion that they'll meet in a T20 World Cup. England have won five of those occasions. So, um, you know, and they've won chasing India's score. So India have batted first in all of those encounters. One thing for the Indian fans is that India were able to beat England in that tri-series tournament building up to the T20 World Cup. They will take a lot of confidence out of that. Uh, and, and you get a sense at the moment, they are on cloud nine. Everything is working for them. Everything is going well. They need a few more players just to fire, but you get a sense that they're building for something really special. Yeah, a, a, a couple of key players, I guess, for India, I know that I've been listening to Heather Knight talking about how they face Poonam Yadav. Now she, we've talked a lot about Shafali Verma, but Poonam Yadav is surely a, a real key for India getting through. She is an absolute key. And we've seen that spin has dominated this T20 World Cup. But with rain around and moisture around the outfield, the spinners may not be as effective. That will play into England's hands probably a little bit more. Um, and the toss, I think, will be really important as well. But some key matchups that I'm looking forward to seeing, Shafali Verma versus Catherine Brunt. I think Shafali is all about being the aggressive batter at the, the top. Uh, Catherine Brunt, we know that she um, is up for a contest. Uh, so that will be certainly match on. Nat Siva against the Indian spinners. Nat Siva, the, the leading run scorer within the T20 World Cup has been good. Um, Heather Knight as well, she sweeps well against the spinners. So I'm going to look forward to those little battles. Yeah, Natsi, interestingly, I was talking to her and she really wants the opportunity to bowl at Verma because because she's tall. Mm -hmm. So she feels she might be able to maybe cramp her and get the, the ball bouncing. So that might be a 
another good matchup. Yeah, yeah, well, she certainly improved from a bowling perspective. England are really working hard. Lisa Kitely, the head coach, is working hard to make her a true all-rounder. Um, batting obviously is coming along. Um, and bowling is still, is, is not that far off. Mm. So then we have the other match. Now the forecast is looking slightly better in the evening. Lucky for Australia. <laughs> well, well, maybe, maybe not because this South Africa side, man, they have come into this World Cup like, as a team that looks fresh, hungry, and really up for any contest with a lot of self-belief. Yeah, South Africa have been flying at the moment. Obviously, they, the winning against England in that first match gave them the belief. Uh, South Africa played Australia in the warm-up match. Australia chased down the runs in the 20th over. Uh, Marazan Cap, four for 20. Dana Fanikirk, the fact that she's gone up the order, I think that's a better spot for her. Uh, she knows this uh, Australian attack, obviously, a number of their players have been out here on Australian conditions playing in the WBBL. That gives them a really distinct advantage, more so than ever before. Uh, and they're not that far off. You almost feel that they needed to play their, their series that they've got scheduled after the T20 World Cup before. And if South Africa had won a couple of those games, it would give them the extra boost. But they will go into this, even though that they're the higher ranked side, they still go in as underdogs and they like that tag. And they've been flying under the radar and doing really well. Well, Australia never flies under the radar when it comes to women's cricket. That they go into this match now, they've lost from the start of the tournament when Taylor Vlamic was out, they've, they've lost their two quickest bowlers. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how does that affect, first of all, with Elise Perry ruled out, how does that affect their bowling uh, attack? Yeah, it does affect because uh, Elise Perry has been bowling extremely well. From a batting perspective, she's kind of been coming in at the end and providing that um, that firepower. And we saw that in the last match against New Zealand, that partnership with Rachel Haynes was really crucial. So they'll miss that. Though I, I get a sense that, you know, they've got Delisa Kamintz or I actually think Sophie Molyneux should be the one, if fit. Um, she should come in and, and she will provide a lot for the Australian bowling attack because, again, another left arm orthodox was seen then be so effective in this T20 World Cup. We'll see, obviously, Sophie Eccleston for England. But I think if Soph Molyneux was to come in, I don't think the Australians will be that disappointed in that sense. Have you got any bold predictions for us, please? <laughs> that we're actually going to get on, yes. <laughs> That is a bold prediction. That is a bold <laughs> prediction. We are going to see some play. Whether it is actually uh, constitutes an official match, I'm not sure. But I am hoping, please, and I'm a Sydney sider, don't let me down. Please let the rain go away, at least for a period of time. I know that we need rain in this country, um, and that's fine, and we've had a fair bit. So let's uh, forget about tomorrow. The rain can stop, and then it can come back after. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm going to get you ready to go out there. Go on. Off you go. Okay, I'm ready. Poor thing.